So we're here to talk through this classic Sudoku by Ashish Kumar. One thing I always suggest sometimes in starting is to scan puzzles by looking at groups of three rows or three columns at the same time. And one reason I'll suggest that for this puzzle is it pops out right in my first scan of the grid that I've got duplicate digits, which means I should be trying to place the last option for that digit in the remaining box of the puzzle. So I get a 1-6 pair pretty quickly. I see two sevens and only one space, the third seven can go in those, those rows. Um, there's a little bit more I would do after placing the seven, which is recognizing I've now marked off this box in the upper left to only have the top space open for the nine coming across. And so this kind of focus of like what looks to be limited, I can get this stage in the grid. In the center three rows, the only repeated digit is the four, so the only digit I'm looking at is that four in the center. In the bottom three rows, I have three pairs of repeated digits. I've got two twos, I've got two threes, and I've got two nines. And so I'd come over like this and starting this puzzle oftentimes. The three columns don't do as much, and in part that's because there's just fully open space in the far right uh, and far left columns and in, in the leftmost shoot, rightmost shoot. And even for the options that have repeats, like this one uh, pair has three options for the one, so I, I wouldn't typically write that on my note system, and these two twos come up like this. There is this nine note, which I'll put in. This is my very first pass through the puzzle, just searching through rows and shoots, uh, sorry, rows and columns and sets of shoots. The next thing I would transition to is looking at the most constrained spaces, at least things that stand out, and the first column and the last column certainly stand out in this puzzle. It's actually another place you could have started. The first column needs a 3, 6, and 7, and right at the start of the puzzle with a 7 and 6 in this top row, there was a naked single. The cell was only able to be a 3 at the start of the, the grid. Um, this 6 coming over here actually limits one last option for the column, which we fully complete. Before moving too fast on from these, I want to place notes where I can place them based on these things. So the seven I placed here gives a seven and a seven. The six I placed gives some information to the bottom and it gives this information here, nothing yet in the center. The one I placed uh, doesn't look like it's yet doing anything over here. So that looks like most of the progress we can mark from doing this column. So let's come to the rightmost column. We have a one, three, and five to be placing, and you'll see uh, the ones eliminate everywhere but this bottom space. So we have something like this going on. We've got a one uh, note that's going there. This is still a three, five, but what I wanna now do is explore three and five a little more carefully in the grid. The five in the space has a lot of options. The five here still has options. The three here actually has a note I haven't marked yet. And that's gonna give this, and at the same time resolve the column. Um, the three I just put in gives me one more note. And the five I put in, it doesn't give me something in these spaces yet, but coming across, there's just one option in that box. So that looks like the key progress to this point in the puzzle. And, and now we step back again and say, where's the next place where there are uh, constraints of interest? These two by two sections that used to have six empty cells, but now just have four is something that looks interesting. This is two, four, eight, but I don't have any twos, fours, and eights anywhere. This is four, five, seven, eight, and I've got uh, an eight clue I can put in, but there are no four, five, sevens in the nearby spaces to use. So next, next in the stack of things I look at are places where I've got a lot of candidates written into a box with my either or notes. And a cell like this um, is a cell that draws my attention. I guess both of these are cells that could draw my attention. And the reason is effectively all but seven digits are effectively placed in this grid. And we've got some places where the nine is in one of two cells or the one and six are in one of two cells. But in this cell, the only digits left are four and five. And so I will look at a cell like this and say, is there a naked pair or triple in the row or column when I see a case like this? And while up here, I've got two, four, eight. So the four is involved. The two and eight add too much flexibility. But over here where this was four, five, seven, eight, this four, five, Interacting with this other space with a four or five looks pretty key. And it actually 
if I, if I even just use that square as a conceptual placement, um, this digit is going to be in one of those two cells. And for sure, whether you recognize that there is a naked triple right now of a 457 in these cells, or by putting in a 45 note in this, this sort of weird, weird form, like this digit is that digit, a 7 goes in, in one of these cells in row 8, which means the 7 in the bottom center box is in the bottom center cell. This placement now gets me a little bit excited that we're going to finally use the structure in the center of the group. We have a lot of places where we have a fourth and sixth column aspect going on. And one thing I see straight away is after I place this option, the six now is again limited to the fourth and sixth columns down bottom, where it was at the top. So I want to think about these two cells for a six. The six can't be in the top one in the center column. So it's in the bottom one. You could separately see that one, two, three, four, options are eliminated by one, two, three, four, sixes, leaving a six. This six quickly moves the six up, moves this one in, puts a one, four here. I now again have a pair of clues that are in the fourth and sixth columns. So the last one in this space is going to have to be in the center column and in the center section. That puts a one here, puts a six here, moves the six notes right above. This is really just tracking digits we've placed in the grid using the standard form of this notation. I've made a fair bit of progress in different parts of the grid, so I don't want to overrun where I made progress. One thing I see is I've got some bookkeeping I can be doing in this space because I've filled in a lot of the center column now with these two digits coming in. So two, four, and eight are what are left behind. Don't have any eights in the top of the grid, but I have a two that's going to be here. And with the four already marked in the space, the two and four are a pair up top. Get a three, eight, like so, I get from that eight, a note up here, which pushes this over here. And uh, this is gonna be another four five, but we don't have to mark it yet. This looks like pretty good progress for right now. I'd mentioned that these were also spaces to start, and that was when I had just the one six note. And that's because here there are three digits left to consider and uh, there are five, seven, and nine, and it's, it's less common that you're going to sort of make a lot of deductions off of that. But in this puzzle with the five and nine in this row, it's easier than what I did down here, I think, at least at the start with this observation to see that this was a naked single. And in doing that, you'd be able to place uh, a seven there by recognizing this would have been another four, five. So I think there are two, two ways to get through the puzzle. You can see a naked triple. 457 early on, like what I did, or you can see this naked pair 45 after finding that cell. But if you don't do those steps, I think you're going to get stuck on the easy pathway through. So 5, 9 down below, 9 comes up top. We've got some more values to place over here, particularly we have a 3. It's going to come up, and let's just do the steps up here. 8 gives 8. We've got four and five to place in this five is going to give five and four. This five is going to give four and five is going to give another four and finish this. This eight, uh, I think that's the vertical stuff we can do. We've got two values left we haven't marked. We need a seven down in the center box. That's seven with two. It's another two, gives a six, gives another six, gives a one, gives another one, gives a four. So we finish that space. There's a leftover digit here we've got a place which is an 8. We've got another 8 coming up top. This row needs a 3 and 2 in it, so the 7 is not in the row, but the 3 comes down, the 2 fills in. 5 in the last cell, 5 with another 9. This 9 comes up and pushes to the left, pushes the 8 down, pushes this here. I'm seeing 5, 9, another 9. We've got 2 and 4 to go. So 2 and 4 and 2 and 4 and 2 and 4. And we're through this classic Sudoku, which hopefully gave you a, a fun challenge. It's like a lot of our harder classic Sudoku. It's not something that needs a tricky swordfish or other crazy kind of stuff. It's just a pretty minimal solving path. Used a good naked uh, pair or triple observation here. And then used some pointing pair observations where in the top and bottom boxes we had for instance, the sixes, which limited here, we had two ones, which limited there. So 
the geometry really shone through in the ways some of these columns worked out, the ways these things worked out. So a really great puzzle from Ashish, and hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again soon.